Hey guys, sorry about that last video. The audio cut out on the second half, so I just chunked it up into two pieces. So instead of having one lecture video and a bunch of example videos, I already kind of worked an example into that last video, and its linear functions should be something you guys are comfortable with. And uh, so now I'll go with average rate of change, and then I'll do one example video that I do will do the kind of four different uh, linear function kind of setups. So. <clears throat> Average rate of change. Sorry about the view. My head's going to kind of come in and out, but hey. Um, average rate of change is really important to us uh, because only linear functions have a constant rate of change. So we need to we'll talk about the rate of change of other functions. And average rate of change is really simple. Okay, I want to define it for you first, and then I'll break it down and kind of talk about what it is. So the average rate of change... of a function say f so that's our function name um, from a to b that's one way to do it or another way is to say on a b Okay, so average rate of change is not constant on, on nonlinear functions, and so we have to specify the interval that we are looking at, because depending on what the interval is, where that's at, how far apart they are, how close they are, our rate of change will change. And so we have to specify that, either by saying from a start to an endpoint or by specifying over some interval. So the average rate of change of a function f from a to b is found using this formula, f of b minus f of a all over b minus a. That's it. That's our average rate of change formula. Really simple. Okay. Now I'm going to erase this so I need more room and this is a tiny chalkboard. So looking at this, right, remembering we're looking at on the interval from a to b Okay, and we're talking about the function f. Okay, so if I have a function f and I have an input a, let's write two coordinate points we know involving this information. I know if the input is a, what's the output of f when the input is a? Well, I mean, we don't know exactly what it is, but what we do know is that it is f of a. By definition, right? This right here is the function f evaluated at the input of a, right? It's our output, right? We had that f of x equals y, right? So this is the input, this is our output. I can do an exactly similar thing for b. So if the input's b, the output is f of b. Super easy, right? Now, let me label these in a, a different way, kind of sub-label. So this is x1, y1, x2, Y2. Probably see where I'm going with this. So slope formula that we just talked about, right, is m equals y2 minus y1 all divided by x2 minus x1. So y2 is f of b minus y1 is f of a all divided by x2 minus x1. Average rate of change is just the slope between the two endpoints on this interval of our function. That's it. That's all it is. It's so easy. So let's throw the chalkboard eraser. Oh. There we go. Let's look at a graph. Okay. Okay, let's say we've got our point A here. Uh, let's have B be right here. So, if I go up to this point here, go to this point here. Okay, this coordinate point, if I write the coordinates down, it's A, comma F of A, right? And this point here, it's B, 
I'm going to have another. We have the input B, and our output is the output of the function when the input is B. It's kind of redundant, but it, it's the way it works. So what we're doing here with average data change, all we're doing is we are finding the slope of that dotted line. That's it. So we have our two points on that dotted line, and we find the slope between them. That's all we have to do. That's all average rate of change is. Identifying what we have. Worst case scenario. Worst case scenario. You don't have these outputs, but you have the equation of the function. You just have to plug in your inputs and get them. So let's do an example like that real quick. Uh, let's change our letter. Uh, we'll stick with f. f of x equals... 3x squared minus 4. Okay, not a linear function, so we can do this. So let's find our average rate of change. So normally I, this would all be written out, but I don't have room, so we should say it. Let's find the average rate of change from negative 2 oops, to 4. Okay, brackets or parentheses doesn't matter. Either way, those endpoints are going to be those values, so it kind of doesn't matter. So what I'm given is I'm given my a and my b, but I need to calculate what my f of a and my f of b are. And to do that, I simply have to find what's f of negative 2 and what's f of 4. Well, using function notation rules, this is 3 times negative 2 squared minus 4. Well, negative 2 squared is negative 2 times negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 2, negative negative makes positive, right? So this becomes a positive 4. 4 times 3 is 12. Minus 4. 12 minus 4 is 8. Okay? So this means that if a is negative 2, f of a is 8. Now f of 4, we get 3 times 4 squared minus 4. So 4 squared. 4 times 4 is 16. 3 times 16 is, well, let's see, 3 times 10 is 30. 3 times 6 is 18. So we get 48 minus 4, or 44. Okay? So, keeping this in mind, right, we get 8 and 44. So this means we have the two points, negative 2, 8, and 4, 44. This is our A, F of A, our B, F of B. So to find the average rate of change of F of X, which is equal to 3X squared minus 4, from negative 2 to 4, I should have to find the slope between these two points. So we take 44 minus 8 by 4 minus negative 2. So 44 minus 8, 36. And 4 minus negative 2. So when we subtract a negative, that becomes plus. So 4 plus 2 is 6. And we get 6. So the average rate of change of 3x squared minus 4 from negative 2 to 4 is 6. And that's it. That's all it is. That's all average rate of change is. Then as far as interpreting what this means, right, remembering if we have some sort of a context of a problem, remember, outputs, inputs. So what does the output represent? What does the input represent? Let's say this was uh, height from a point after 10 feet, right? Um, so that means the height from the certain point changed by, increased by six feet every foot, whatever that means, right? Who knows? Let's come up with a better example next time. So interpreting these can be really simple if you just use whatever the inputs and outputs represent from the original function, okay? And that's average rate of change. I hope that wasn't too painful. This will be nice and easy. Our next lesson coming up that is the topic for, the last topic for this week absolute value so i'll be posting that video no later than friday you guys have a great day